want you to lift up your hand and to cry to the God of heaven that today the Lord will do something, something new in your life. He will open a new door in your life in Jesus' name. Please, please pray, pray to the Lord right now. Heavenly Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, Father, we cry out to you today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, that you will open doors. You will open doors for the men, for the women, for the children of this church. Father, you will open doors for us. Doors that no man can open. Doors that only you, the Alpha, the Omega, can open. Father, that you will open a new door for us. A door of blessing. A door of favor. Father, that you alone, you alone, the door that you alone can open. Father, open it for us in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, don't send us home empty. We cry out to you, God of heaven. Don't send us home empty. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Heavenly Father, we cry out to you. Because you alone has the power to change life. Father, change our life today. Change our life today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. We have some things to cover and, you know, it's a very, very important topic. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Please, what we are going to discuss this morning is a very important, very, very important topic that you need to pray. What, when we leave here this morning, we will pray before you go. But I don't think that the prayer we will do here is going to be enough. You have to follow it up when you get home. God is a good God. Amen. But sometimes we have to push and push and push to get something. You understand? And this is a very important thing. I want to bless the Lord for my brother for the testimony about tithe and offering. Amen. Look, it's very important that you pay your tithe. Because without paying your tithe, even I was going to talk about it next week. The last six months, the church has been supporting, you know, the, the savings have been supporting the church. All the money we've saved the previous year, is what, what is coming in is, no, is, is less than what we are spending. So we have to tap into saving. We have been spending, saving, 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 saving. And the reason is because people are not paying their tithe. Amen. Everybody needs to pay their tithe because that is the only way you can be blessed. You are not paying the tithe to a man. You are paying your tithe to the God of heaven. And it's, it's, it's a point of contact. It's between you and him. So when you pay and you, 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 know, you, you turn that tithe to a seed and you, you speak to it and you say, God, do this, and you is planted, he himself will answer you. You know, like my brother said, I know some of the things he went through. You know, he just came back, spent all the money back home, shipped his car back home, and he came back here, bought another car, and within nine days, the storm that came in October, the tree just came, divide the car into two. And he don't even have insurance, a full insurance to cover it. And he's just getting a new job. You know, so everything was rough, but look at what he said now. You know, things... Sometimes we struggle unnecessarily because we are not in obedience to God. And that is what I wanted to say before the Lord said we should go for testimony. The Lord said to us a couple of weeks back, He said, come before me with your request, seven requests for the year, and come before me with an Esther fast. For three days dry fast. And... Some people did it, some did not do it. I want to make a comment about it because for those who were here on Saturday, how many people were here on Saturday? You can ask any one of those who raised up their hand. The anointing on Saturday was so different from the anointing on Sunday. It was unbelievable. It was like night and day. And on Sunday, when I asked people to come forward, so that the same thing that happened on Saturday can happen on Sunday, 
on Saturday, you do, I didn't even touch anybody. Did I touch anybody? The fire was just popping on the wall. You just find yourself anywhere you are, you'll be some assaulting. That is, the power was so intense. It was, it was unbelievable. The, the, the fire, they were, you know, the, the angels just descended upon this place. And on Sunday, because the Lord said, come before me for three days, we slept here. One of the sisters even brought her children. They slept in the church. So on Sunday, when I see that there is a shift in the spirit, I was asking the Lord, please, these people too. Because the Lord said, bring seven requests before me. I said, please, can I do it? The Lord said, no, you cannot do it. As I raise up my hand, they will lift my hand down. The Lord said, obedience. Obedience. Is very important to me. He said he will touch the people he wants to touch. But I should not stand for everybody. That he will touch. But on Saturday it was not like that. And I learned a lesson from that. Obedience to the Lord is number one. Even if you don't have too much time. Even 30 minutes to come and pray. 30 minutes. The Lord will still honor it than for you not to do anything. So please, when the Lord gives instruction, it's not a man. You can't negotiate with him. You can't tell him, you know, you have to have a genuine reason and discuss it with him. But obedience is very important because there is a big shift in the spirit. And you can ask the people that were here. It is completely different, night and day. So that is why I said obedience is very important. Let's be in obedience to the Lord. Amen. This morning, I would like to preach on the topic, the key of David. What he opened, no one can shut. What he shut, no one can open. Amen. This key is a very, very important key. Tell somebody you need it. It is a master key. Master key that can open every door and that can close every door. Wherever you are in your life right now, there are certain doors that need to be open for you. There are certain doors that need to be closed for you. The only key that can open this door and close it is the, is the key of David. It is only the Lord that gives this key. It is not given by man. It is given by Jesus Christ himself. And he gives it to whoever he wants to. Amen. Because it is a spiritual key. It is a key that when you have it, everything in your life will change. Amen. It is, it is a very important key. And that is why I said, even though we are going to pray today, you have to keep it up. It's not, it's so, it is very, very important to your life that you absolutely need it in your life. Amen. And when you get it, you don't let it go because it can transform your life. You know, when you close your door or you jam your door somewhere and you call the locksmith, they used to have a master key. And when they use that master key, it will open door. That is the physical door. This is a door that a key that it is a spiritual key. And it's a spiritual key that can close so many doors that you don't want in your life. So many things that you have been struggling for. When you get it, you can use it to lock it up. When you get it, you can use it to open so many doors of opportunities for your life. Amen. This key can unlock the spiritual. It can take you straight to the throne of God. It can make angels obey you. It can open the spirit. The flow of the spirit of the Lord can flow in your life. And when you have in, come in contact with this, your life will definitely change. What are the, who is qualified to get this key? Who is qualified? What is the qualification to get this type of key? Must you be a pastor? You have to be a pastor, a teacher, or whatever. No, it's, this key is available to any child of God. But the Bible explains there are qualifications. 
for a child of God who is going to get this key. It's not a common key. It's not something you can just find anyhow. No. It, there is a qualification for you to get it. Revelation chapter 3. Let's go there. Verse 7 to 10. Revelation 3, 7 to 10. I'm going to read it because there are certain things I'm going to be pausing and pinpoint to you. All I want you to do is to just look at your Bible. Amen. Are we all there? Say amen. He said, To the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write, These are the word of him who is holy and true. Who holds the key of David? What he opened, no one can shut. What he shut, no one can open. I know your deed. See, I have placed before you an open door that no one can shut. I know that you have little strength. That is the number one. I will explain it later. Little strength. Qualification. Little strength. Those who have little strength. That is number one qualification. Yet, you have kept my word. The second point is those who have kept God's word. Those who have little strength and those who have kept God's word. And have not denied my name. The third point is those who have not denied Jesus' name. So what is the first point? The second one? And the third one? Amen. Now, let's stop there for a minute. We will go back to that scripture. But I want to explain what it means. Because I, I don't want us to rush it. I want you to understand it. Because when you are praying by yourself, you must understand what you are praying about. Now, those who have little strength, we live in this world that is wicked. Though you have a little strength when in your life, you know, as a human being, you don't even know what you are doing. But you, you love the Lord, you know, you don't, you don't, you don't, you don't, you, you are not, um, you don't, you are not possessed with any power. You don't have the money power, you don't have, you know, but within your, yourself, you are ready to serve the Lord with everything inside of you. You know, you are ready to give him your own life with all your strength and with all your might. You don't have much power, you don't have much money, but everything, your spirit within you by yourself, you are ready to serve the Lord. With all your strength, with all your might, you will do everything for Jesus. With very little as you are, you are ready to do everything for him. That is the first qualification. Jesus himself said, I will open the door. I, will, I have placed before you an open door. For those who have little strength, those who have kept my word. That means those who have kept my word. Those who have followed his rules and regulation. Everything in the Bible. You know you have little strength. You know you, you are not... Uh, you are a sinner, but you are doing everything within your power to obey God. To obey his word that is in the Bible. You are following it and you are not allowing the word of God to depart from your mouth. You are saying, you know, the word of God, I will follow it. Even if everybody around me are committing sin, I will not do it. I will follow what the word of God is saying. That is a second qualification. Amen. The third qualification is those who have not denied Jesus' name. How do you deny Jesus' name? In time of trials and tribulation. They say you should swear when there is a problem. Yeah, you say I swear in Jesus' name. You have denied the name of Jesus. You have taken the name of the Lord for nothing. When you, the Lord Jesus Christ himself said, those who deny me, I will also deny them. When there is a problem, when you have to show your Christianity. When you have to stand for the kingdom, you kept quiet. When people are talking, you see, that is why Muslims are different. When you talk bad about Muhammad, they are ready to burn the old Wooster down. You understand? But with the same, you have to have the same passion for your God. When things are being said about Jesus, 
about his kingdom. You are ready to, you know, you don't care where. You are ready to stand for him. You are ready to talk about him. You are ready to say to everybody that, yes, Jesus is the Lord. You understand? You are ready to proclaim your faith to many people. You are ready to tell them, I'm a Christian. But because of the attitude of some people, at the, the way we behave, we can't even tell somebody at work that we are Christian. Because they will say, you a Christian? They'll probably laugh. You understand? When you are doing things like that, that your, your lifestyle cannot project your Christianity, you are denying Jesus. Because we are the light. We are the one that's supposed to proclaim the word of the Lord. We are the one that's supposed to tell the word about Jesus. But when we are living a questionable life, we are denying Jesus Christ. If you are living a life that you are not denying the Lord, you are following his word, even with your little strength, the open door will come before you. Amen. The open door will come before you. And then when the open door comes before you, you will need the key to open that door. And the Lord will give you that key. And what is that open door? Let's read on to what will happen. Amen. He said, verse 9 said, I will make those who are of synagogue of Satan, who claim to be Jew, though they are not, but a liar, I will make them come and fall down at your feet and, and acknowledge that I have loved you. Since you have kept my command to endure patiently, I will also keep you from the hour of trial that is going to come upon the old world to test those who live on the heart. Amen. Now, let's look at it this way. The Lord said, if you have if another qualification, the fourth qualification for those who can have this key is if you can wait patiently for the Lord, which is the most difficult thing for Christians to do. They don't want to wait patiently for the Lord. They want a driving McDonald's answer prayer. Amen. Fast food, uh, driving, drive out. Yes, I just talked to the Lord. Yeah, 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 yeah. He didn't answer me. Ah, what's all this prayer, fasting, all these things? I, I don't even have time for church. I went, I went two, three weeks ago. What, what did I get? You understand? You are not waiting patiently. If you are waiting patiently for the Lord, he said, ask anything in my name and I will do it for you. But not at your own time. At this time. At this time. You are, when you lay a request before God, even God can come and show you 200 visions. I remember when I first uh, got born again and I had some wonderful dreams. I had some wonderful, wonderful dreams and wonderful vision. So, ah, I've prayed, I fasted. The two weeks later, I didn't get anything. I went to my spiritual mother and said, ah, I've waited two weeks. I said, I've waited two weeks. God said he's going to bless me. He's going to multiply me. So what is going on? Two weeks I've waited, no answer. She laughed and laughed and laughed. She said, you don't know anything yet, do you? I said, but that is what God said. She said, ah, she said, the time of God. She said, do you know that a thousand years is but one day with the Lord? You have to wait. God has spoken, but God don't work in man's calendar. But he's, he will always fulfill his promise. He never fails. And he's not going to fail. And then she gave me an example of Father Abraham. That from the time God said, I'm going to give you a son, it took another 25 years. I, I said, God, don't wait. I don't, I, I don't have 25 years to wait. Oh. Because 25 years is a long time. You understand? But when you wait patiently on the Lord, you are the master key. Those who wait patiently on the Lord, they always get the best. The best. God don't give any rubbish. He gives the best. Amen. He gives the best when you wait patiently. And God will trial you. You will go through tests. If not, why will God give you such a big key? A big key that can open so many doors. Why will God give it to you? If you, are not, if you are not wishing patiently, you will misuse it. So God himself will take you through some process. Amen. 
through certain things in life. But if you learn how to wait patiently, whatever the Lord has said to you now in your life, wait for Him because it will surely come true. And at the end of the day, you know, he who eats last never eats any spoiled thing. You understand? Hallelujah. You will not eat anything that is spoiled. God will always make sure that He reward you abundantly. Amen. So these are the four qualifications for you to get the key. You have to use all your strength, all your might to serve the Lord. And you have to obey His word. You have to follow His instruction in His word. The third one, you cannot deny His name. You have to carry Jesus Christ everywhere you go. Your attitude, your action, everything that you do must glorify Jesus. Because when you are, you, you, are, you are the one he has ordained you to be his weakness, if you are not witnessing about him because of your attitude, then you are not witnessing him, you are denying him. Amen. So your attitude is very important and how you undo things. Amen. So and then the fourth thing is to wait patiently for him. If you can wait for the promises of the Lord, he will sure it will sure come true for you. Even if it linger, even whatever, just wait. Believe in your heart that God has said it and is going to come true. Amen. Look, let me tell you, my own mother taught me a good lesson about patience. She said to me, in life, not only me, but to all my siblings, when God speaks to you, you must learn to wait. And learn to serve the Lord all the days of your life. Things might be rough, but serve the Lord. My mother, the first four children that my mother had died. And she said what happened was, you know, the one was four years old, the first child was four, and the second one was two. And then she said all of a sudden she had two children and... Um, some which came from the village, you know, and stay in the house. And when the witch stay in the, you know, in the house, she said, when the woman left, the very day the woman left, the first child died. So she said, when the first child died, because my father was from a polygamous house, and the woman who came was one, the stepwife, one of the wives of my grandfather. And she came to greet them. And the very day she left, the baby died. So they were like, this baby was not sick. How can this baby die? She said, then when the baby died, they cried, they did everything, you know. And then the woman had in the village that they said the baby died. And then she came to greet them for the baby that died. Yes, and then the second one died three months after she died. Even she didn't leave before that one died. Eh. So my mother said, so the second baby died. And she have no child, no more children, nothing. They said because she's from another town, she's not from the same place with my dad, so they don't want her. So she said they should have sent her away, you know, with her children. It would have been okay. But it, it, she taught us a good lesson. She said it took her almost another six, seven years before she can get pregnant again. She said then God wanted to test her. She said everywhere they pray, Rely on the Lord. God said, you are going to have children until you said, I don't want any more. That you are going to have plenty of children. And you are going to say, no more, no more, no more. I don't want any more children. So she said she was happy. And then six, seven years later, she got pregnant. And it was twins, two boys. She said she was happy. She said, God has done it. On the eighth day, when they were doing the naming ceremony of the children, they picked the baby one to give a bath, to dress the baby up for ceremony, dead. They picked baby two, dead.
She said, she said, but God said to me, I am going to have many children and I will not be able to count them. She said, then she encouraged herself in the world because everybody was laughing at her. They were saying, is she the only one? She said, but she waited. She cried to God and she said to us, in life, Obey whatever the Lord says. Just wait on the Lord. When you wait patiently, God will always do what he promised. He said after that, the baby just came, my brother, the sister, everybody. After that, by the time she had seven after that, my father said, If you woman, you have another children, I'm going to run away from this house. <laughs> Amen. Amen. So after that, she said, ah, one, two, three, they just swallow. Bah, 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 bah. Well, so when we were growing up, we were like that. You know, one step after the other. Amen. She said, the word of the Lord will always come true. Because when I cannot imagine in my own head how a woman can lose two children, wait for another seven years, to have another set and to have them die on the eighth day of their ceremony. And they are, she said the worst part was they've already bought goats and everything. They were cooking. People were already cooking. So she said, they said, no, 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 no. You must not, you must not cry. Because God is the one that gives and God is the one that take away. So take the food and go and give everybody in the neighborhood the way you have planned. So she said people came and they still serve them food. And they don't know that the babies were dead. She said because the, 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 the pastor who was there said, Are you the owner of the children? You are not. So still, you must still do what you have planned to do. You must still give glory to God. And after that, God opened the door. Everything we go through in life, there is a reason for it. And it is to strengthen us. Okay, I'm giving you our own story of many, many years now. You understand? Now all the kids are grown, everybody is grown and everything. And my father actually said, no, 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 no. Even there was almost a nine-year gap between me and my younger brother. Because my father said, if you get pregnant again, I'm going to run away. Because I don't want any more children. It's too much. Don't kill me with children. You understand me? But when you wait patiently for the Lord, hallelujah, the Lord will always fulfill which, what he has promised. So these are the qualifications for you to learn to wait. You must learn to wait in every area. When you lay your request before the Lord on the promises of God, wait for it. It's going to come true. When you are waiting, that is when God in that process, when you are going through trials and tribulation and bumpy work and everything, and you still have your faith in the Lord, that is when God will put that open door before you and allow you to go through because you have been tested and you have proven, your faith, your faith has proven that yes, you can be trusted. A faith tested is a faith trusted. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? A faith that is tested is a faith that is trusted. Do you understand it? A faith that is tested. If a faith is not tested, it cannot be trusted. But when a faith is tested and it can stand, then that faith can be trusted. Amen. So in order for you to have the open door, to have the key, the master key, to open blessing, in time of trial and tribulation, don't abandon God. Still stay with God, no matter what. You are not your own. You are not the one who created yourself. Learn to surrender. You can do nothing. Don't, 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 Allow your anger to rise up against the living God. Who are you anyway? Amen. Release yourself to the Lord of God of heaven. And he will see you true. Amen. Now, what can this key open? 
Amen. What can he open? Now, open your Bible to Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. Isaiah chapter 22. What can he open? Isaiah 22, verse 17 to 25. Before we read that Isaiah, you can see what the Lord said in Revelation. That is where he started from, in that Revelation 3. He said, I will make those who are from Satanic kingdom to do what at your feet? Bow down, Bow down at your feet. Amen. When you, are, when you have this key, the first thing that will happen is that power has changed hand. Amen? Power has changed hand. And the first thing that will happen in satanic kingdom, we know that you have a new power. What will they do? Bow down at your feet. And the